In an influential recent book, The Better Angels of Our Nature, Harvard psychologist Steven Pinker argues that enlightenment reason, together with the emergence of the modern nation state and international trade, has transformed human culture. There is much less violence than ever before in human history, he argues, and the last century has seen the civil rights movement, a transformation of women's rights, the gay rights movement, and now even an animal rights movement. With increasing education and the growth of liberal democracies, Pinker suggests that we may now be capable of achieving a truly just society. His optimism is shared by other leading atheists, such as Richard Dawkins. But there's a problem with this view, a problem that confronts us with what I call the justice paradox. As we look back over the history of human justice systems, we'll notice two things. First, the persistent belief that it's possible for human society to achieve true justice. And second, the consistent failure of every previous legal code to reach this goal. In the early 19th century, Napoleon thought he could assure a just society through an elegant legal code. In the late 19th century, Marx and his followers insisted that a revolutionary shift to working class control would resolve the conflict between capital and labor and would produce a fully just social order. Both were unsuccessful, communism catastrophically so. Perhaps high culture and education are the solution and will produce more just societies, as Pinker suggests. But we have only to look back at Nazi Germany, one of the most educated and cultured societies in history, to find a painfully recent example of quite the opposite correlation. Perhaps liberal democracies are the natural direction in which the world is trending. But one thing we've learned from the Arab Spring and what's going on in the Middle East right now is that when a, a dictatorship is toppled, a liberal de democracy is not necessarily the natural outcome. So what about America? Our founding, founding fathers were remarkably realistic about the limitations of legal codes, and many would point to America's legal system as one of the world's most just. But Americans, too, have tended to be overly optimistic about law, and significant injustice remains. Any country in which 33% of all young black men who do not have a college education can be expected to spend time in prison, and 60% of black men who do not finish high school cannot claim to be anywhere near the achievement of true justice. We unfortunately have had some very vivid recent reminders of this just in the last several months. So what hope do we have? You may be surprised to hear that I, a law professor right here in your midst at Penn, and I think Hannah may have overstated my toughness just a little bit, but I'll keep that in mind as I go back to class. Uh, think the Christian worldview better explains our longing for justice and makes better sense of the justice paradox than any other system of thought. You may think of Christianity as an ancient and obsolete worldview. An atheist friend of mine, who also happens to be in the audience tonight, and I won't look at him either um, at the moment, describes Christianity as, quote, and this is a friend of mine, or at least he was a friend before tonight, um, <laughs> not much more than a human creation of Bronze Age peasants derived from wholly unexceptional and largely fictional narratives. Otherwise, he thinks Christianity is pretty persuasive. Um, so how could it possibly be relevant to our 21st century challenges. Christianity's explanation of the justice paradox is one part of the answer. I believe that Christianity actually makes more sense, not less, of the justice paradox and other puzzling features of our experience than any other religion or system of thought. Christianity teaches that optimism about our own ability to usher in utopia by our own lawmaking is a central and destructive feature of human nature. Jesus of Nazareth, was tr of Nazareth was tried twice under both Jewish and Roman law, 
two of the finest legal systems the world had ever known. He was first tried under trumped-up charges under the Jewish law. False witnesses were used, and the high priest improperly intervened. Then he was tried under Roman law, which provided several escape hatches, but they all failed because Pontius Pilate, the judge, was too weak to use them. So the failure of human legal systems lies at the very heart of the Christian story. Christianity is the only major religion or system of thought that rests on a story in which law fails. As a Christian, I believe that we're incapable of achieving a truly just society on our own because we've rebelled against the ultimate lawgiver. But I also believe that the ruler of the universe has stepped in, in the person of Jesus Christ, to restore justice by taking our injustice on himself. So the Christian worldview rests on a skepticism about our ability to establish justice on the basis of our own moral improvement. But at the same time, it offers us a foundation for justice that to my mind is unsurpassed. The Christian understanding of justice starts with the biblical principle that each of us, whatever our race, gender, status, or physical and mental firmities or infirmities, is made in the image of God, and that our most fundamental need is for restored relationship with God and with, in, with each other. How does this relate to social justice? To start with, it gives us a grounding for human rights and for the principle that laws should be transparent, defined in advance, and applied to everyone in the same way. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which was first adopted in 1948, represents a wonderful achievement asserting the value of every human being in response to the horrors of the Second World War. But it famously does not rest on any generally agreed upon philosophical foundation or articulation of why every human being is innately valuable. Of course, Christians are not the only ones who believe in human rights. But a Christian explanation of human rights is, I believe, a firmer foundation than that offered by top atheist intellectuals, such as P Steven Pinker or Princeton ethicist Peter Singer. Materialists point to some of the trappings of consciousness, such as our ability to make choices about the kind of life we live, as the basis for human dignity. But locating the value of a human being in any specific attribute risks the possibility of grading human value according to those attributes until those who are more intelligent or better able to make choices are more valuable, are more valuable than those who are not. And materialism is in principle compatible with a host of different philosophies, many of which would not show equal value to each human life. Christianity can provide a grounding for the valuing of every human being, regardless of incidental attributes, by locating that value in the fact that human beings are created in the image of God. Let me be clear. I don't claim that Christians have always honored these principles when we have been in a position to shape the legal system. Whether it was in the Roman Empire under Constantine and after Constantine, or the more recent culture wars debates in the United States, we Christians bring our own sins to the table, even as we seek to create just laws. But the virtue of Christianity, as contrasted with nearly any other system of thought, is that it's self-correcting. Napoleon and Marx thought, that, thought and taught that with the right legal and political framework, human beings could create a just legal order. By contrast, when Christians seek to usher in the kingdom of God through law, they're forgetting how Jesus died and the way he constantly distanced himself from the powerful and aligned himself with the weak and marginalized. They're denying Christianity's teachings not promoting them. So what might a Christian vision of justice look like? The civil rights movement was the obvious and most dramatic 20th century illustration. Um, 
the important thing about the movement, for my purposes, and one of the most remarkable things about the movement, was that it focused a lot more on changing hearts than on changing laws. And the two laws, the two main laws, that the civil rights movement did inspire were very unusual laws. Unlike many, most, moral and social reforms, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 were not criminal laws. They were not designed to put offenders in jail or even to impose damages for the wrongs committed against blacks in this country in the past. The objective of the Civil Rights Act was to give us a more integrated workplace in which blacks and whites and others can work side by side. The Voting Rights Act created the modern law of voting rights, which gave us an integrated political community in which blacks and whites can vote side by side. And Rogers has written a lot about this and um, can give some qualifications to, to, uh, to that. The main reason these laws have been so successful is that they, unlike so many laws, actually help to create relationships in our communities. Another example of a law that, in my view, reflects a Christian vision of justice, at least in part, is our bankruptcy system, which is based on the premise that those who have failed should be given a fresh start and reintegrated more fully into society. I think the new health care law could one day be another law that fits this category, although, in my view, it still uh, needs some major fixes before we get there. These examples are drawn from the U.S., where our Declaration of Independence claims as self-evident the fact that all men and women, we would now say, are created equal. Can we seriously say that Christianity offers the best foundation for justice everywhere in the world? Wouldn't it be much better to have a secular foundation for justice to ground something like the Universal Declaration of Human, Arts, of human Rights um, that a faith system that is, ro ro that is rooted in Western culture. When we look at the global evidence here, we'll realize that it's our own rootedness in Western culture that makes us think secularism is the common ground and that Christianity is in any way tied to the West. To be sure, people have committed evil acts of cultural imperialism in the name of Christianity, quite contrary to the mandate given by Jesus himself. But still, the reality is that the Christian faith is the most multicultural movement in all of history. Today, a third of the population of the world would identify as Christian, more than twice the number of non-religious folks, and Christianity is the only major world religion that does not have strong ties to a specific culture or ethnicity. We might be tempted to associate Christianity with Europe and North America, but these continents actually represent less than half of the global Christian movement, with some of the fastest growing Christian populations being found in South America, Africa, and China. A Christian vision of justice might look different in different countries, but the underlying principles are the same, and the diversity of cultures will offer needed correctives to each other as Christians from totally different cultural backgrounds help each other to see their blind spots. What would a society look like if we took seriously Jesus' radical teachings about loving those who hate you and seeing the least as the greatest and only using power to serve the weak? As a Christian, I believe that we're incapable of achieving justice by our own moral improvement and that this calls for humility about what we can achieve through law. But I also believe that God is capable of achieving justice and that despite our rebellion from him, he will not only reconcile us to him through the forgiveness offered by Jesus' death on our behalf, he also promised that he will one day restore the universe to the goodness for which it was intended. The beauty we experience now in temporary flashes will again characterize the entire creation and the evil of suffering will be removed. We see hints of what this promised world might look like in the examples of justice I've just referred to. And here is the really cool thing. If Christianity is true, 
our contributions to justice today, as humble and as flawed as they may be, may have eternal significance. They and we are part of an eternal reclamation project. The question I'll leave you with is this. How could there possibly be a more exciting way to live? <laughs>